Oh, and of course we got the fucking behemoth coming in there. Oh, Are we going to address the fact that there's protein molecule on the ship at some point, please? This ain't going to help anything! Help us! He's crazy! You better button up. Well, I was thinking, since the comms are down, the only way to communicate is in person. And Mars isn't looking to arrest them for stealing a ship, so... <laughs> you too. Put your lid on. <laughs> I'm just going to send the camera guy. It's time to go! Make sure you tell them we didn't blow up the Sang Yoon. Tell them what really happened, please. Oh my god! I love you, Amos! Pause. You know where you would so want to do something, but your own morality just would not let you do it. But to see. <laughs> to have someone like Amos who you're able to deploy in those situations. That man is worth his weight in gold. Because actually, I think what he did was the right thing. Maybe that's saying something ultimately about my morality. And if I was tested under those pressures, maybe I would be Amos. Maybe I actually would um, do that. But oh my God, that was fantastic. That was full on fucking brilliant. I'm, I'm actually gleeful. I feel a little bit ashamed, but I have to say I am actually gleeful that they, they just did that. But anyway, play. There is no substitute for actually being here. When are you shipping out? Didn't like her. When am I shipping out? Mm -hmm. Really, Pastor? Aren't you married? Wait. Pause. I don't like this. Do you know what? I didn't say it last episode, but I was thinking it. I don't like the way that she's flirting around with Anna. It's really setting me off. And I'm going to be extremely disappointed in Anna. She does this bullshit. Play. Yes, I'm married. I'm in for the whole ride. How did you manage that? Blackmail. Well, technically extortion, but blackmail just sounds good. <sighs> Do you think you can pull strings for me, too? Why would you want that? Why do you? I'm an aging debutante. Papering my emptiness and regrets with thrill-seeking. <laughs> okay. I like her marginal morning. Your turn. If I said I felt cold, that would be pushing it. It would. <sighs> you want to indulge in a selfish desire to be a part of something amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well done. She has some real potential. With a little mentor, and she could be an outstanding technician worth investing in. Maybe you'll pride yourself. Oh, her tree. Not tonight. I arranged this party for you. They're not just gonna talk about you. It's gonna be about me and father. You humiliated us. I'm tired of it. You're tired of what? Tired of you and your holier-than-thou crap. Slumming with your precious belters, saving humanity from itself. Do you even know how condescending you are? You're such a narcissist. Hello, Pot. My name is Kettle. You're black. <gasps> I'm through being humiliated by you. How is she humiliating you? My father is a damaged man. You're never going to be good enough for him. Yeah. 
That's the tea. I don't like her. Whatever Cone did to the Razi, it got in deep. It's gonna take a shipyard to fix her. <sighs> Our only hope is that Monica and Cohen put in a good word yeah, for us. Um, I wouldn't really count on that. <sighs> Alice thinks I was too hard on them. I was being gentle. <laughs> I mean, I kind of wish you'd run it by me first. Sorry, Kat. It's all right. Okay. So, so what are we gonna do? <laughs> Slow down. Let them board us. We'll see we were sabotaged, and we'll clear our names. This is not gonna work. Maybe for the, the terrorism thing, but they're gonna take the Rossi. Is Bobby gonna be on the Martian ship? Oh, yes! Probably. It's either that or we die. I didn't think it'd end like this. I don't like it! Can't we just do a circle of the bubble? Why is it just forward and back? Surely we could do laps and keep ahead of them. Oh, and of course we've got the fucking behemoth coming in that one. Ah. Beltalada. Listen up. This is your captain. And this is your ship. This is your moment. You may think that you're scared, but you're not. That isn't fear. That's your sharpness. That's your power. We are belters. Nothing in the void is foreign to us. The place we go is the place we belong. This is no different. In your ladder, go through the ring. Call it their own. But a belter opened it. We are strong. We are sharp. And we don't feel fear. This moment belongs to us. think we would be better off the Rosy crew going onto the behemoth than they would the Martian ship. I'm gonna lose my place. <laughs> Your face isn't there. I found a way for us to stay. Just don't ask too many questions because it's... <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am. Oh, he doesn't want to stay. Ken, come now and it won't be desertion. <gasps> I signed up to fight dusters and skinnies. Not whatever the hell that thing is. Oh, you coward. You saw what happened to the army gas. Do you feel safe? Lock me up on Titan. I'm not going through that thing. Get him out of here. There are rules. I, I can't. I thought you wanted to see it for yourself. He does a so close. If it were just me, I would. But I have a family. Ah, uh, so does Anna. I was wrong before. God is not with us out here. Not everyone's like us, Anna. <laughs> I can't lie, I would be Anna in this situation. Just your curiosity. Hello, my love. I, uh, I don't know how to say this, but I'm, I'm going through the ring. With a transmission delay, you won't get this message until I've already done it. I won't hear your voice. Uh, until I'm back, and uh, you might not. That's the thing. <sighs> this bitch. What made you decide to stay? Bitch finally left. Don't talk about your sister that way. <sighs> she spat in your face. You admire her for. She has the will to take our name into the future. She refuses to be stopped, even by me. What do you do? 
Plan parties. That is an abusive parent right there. Oh well. Are you alright? The hazard pay. I stayed for the hazard pay. Of course, I should say, what infuriates me about her is that I hate that she was raised by Jules Pierre Mao, who is, you know, he's just abusive. It's that's kind of psychological abuse to attach your love to conditions in the way that he clearly did. But she is an adult now and she is making her choices. And I don't like it when people choose poorly. They almost choose to perpetuate um, the pain they've suffered rather than taking the lesson from being abused that you don't perpetuate that abuse yourself. Like you actually terminate that cycle of abuse. So yeah, I'm, I'm extra angry at her for that. Play. Who's she talking to? If this is her dad. Ben was a friend to me and I'm sorry he's gone. I need to get a message to my father. His name is Jules Pierre Mao. Daddy, everything you feared about the proto molecule has come to pass. And instead of being hailed as a visionary, you're rotting away in jail. I can't fix it. But I can destroy the man who brought you low. Julie never could and never would do for you. I just wanted you to know that. Oh, you fucking weapon. God, Julie was worth ten of you. Whoa. Oh, that distortion on the stars. Why? Why? I thought Ashford was being paranoid. Locked down the skiff, he said. I said, why? He said, to keep anyone from deserting. I said, why would anyone desert now? Don't. So, we are your people. And I love you. I always will. But you're going back to them. And without even a word to me. I was afraid you wouldn't let me go. Really? Don't space her, Camino. You underestimate me. So do I, clearly. Don't go too fast out there. really surprised me. Fair play, Camino. What are you slowing down for? You were doing fine. Where the hell have you been? <laughs> ah, gonna get to the crime scene. You're gonna check out the corpse. <laughs> oh god, I got so excited I nearly choked myself after death. <coughs> Clues. No, no more crime stories. You want to talk about the non-local quantum hologram? The phase conjugate adaptive waves resonating in microtubules in the brain, which of course require some close timeline curves and a Lorenzian manifold. But you catch up. I'll wait. <laughs> so a crime scene. Crime scene. <gasps> that that thing in the middle of the place that grabbed the ship and the torpedoes. You seem different. All right. Signal's pretty good inside the ring. It's, uh, it's really good. So you coming or not? This is amazing. It's Naomi. I'm coming home. Oh, we got our voice back, guys. Oh, my God. Rosie, do you copy? No, they can't hear you. I'm coming. Do this to me again, the expanse. Oh, God damn it! And this is 
like two episodes in a row now. I'm going to have to watch another one now. Oh, God, this night. <laughs> oh, my God. Guys. Guys. Oh. Yeah, this is going to be another one of those disorganised reviews because I'm just going to have to hit things as I feel about them rather than necessarily in the order because I just can't not talk about that Miller sequence there that was brilliant it was brilliant as a narrative device the way that they explain look basically we're going to speak simple for you and I mean simple as a language not like I don't know that the word there would be simply that was really fun. like I actually find that really really funny the, the way that they sold that is like Dude, you're not going to understand a damn thing that I say if I don't use metaphor. So I'm doing this for you. It also establishes kind of a personality to whatever that is, whether it's Miller and they're using the sort of type of sarcastic wit that we all know that Miller had, or whether the proto molecule itself now from taking on so many people is actually you know, un has, a, has a sense of humour of its own, which was the way I read it, and which that's kind of what gave me the giggles, was that, you know, it's not just sentience that we're dealing with, it's, you know, they can literally take the piss out of us, which they kind of should be. I was trying to listen out to the actual technical jargon that Miller spoke in those moments to see if I could at least get some idea conceptually what he was talking about and I'm sure he said something like quantum time loops or quantum time something so I think something is going on with space-time actually relating to the proto molecule I don't know how I don't know whether it's able to because obviously we as humans um, operate in three dimensions and we can actually read the fourth dimension and I've got an insert somewhere that I'll put in here which is um Fitz from Agent of, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. explaining how um we perceive the fourth dimension is actually wrong it's brilliant so I, I won't go yakking on about that I'll just put the insert in how do you how can I explain this right we're 3d yeah okay but imagine imagine we lived in a two-dimensional existence flat just like a piece of paper we wouldn't be able to conceive of three dimensions, of, of, of a, a cube or anything that's not two-dimensional, okay? Yeah. Right, so we flat paper people would perceive this three-dimensional cube as many separate two-dimensional moments, as time passing, the point on the line, traveling through space and time. But in fact, the cube, the line, is fixed. Yeah, it's just sitting there. There's no future, there's no past. It just, it just is. And nothing you can do will change that. So I'm wondering if the protomolecule or the beings behind the protomolecule, if that is the case, actually can operate and fully experience the fourth dimension, which is space-time which would if would appear to us that they were able to time travel to manipulate time to move between it it's possible that that's what's happening that is i've just got honestly my brain is on fire i can't even keep up in words with the rate at which my brain is like theorizing about the, the different elements of this so i apologize if like gobbledygook is coming out of my face because this is basically a stream of consciousness that is not even managing to keep up with the consciousness that is, is trying to stream out my face that was fantastic again i love the complexities of the relationships i think i read the camina drummer opa stuff pretty successfully there um, so not much to say on that. It was kind of as I'd expected. The interesting twist that we had, which unfortunately I literally got to just before it was revealed. I saw her in the dress at that party and my brain started to go, hang on. And I think I said wait or something in the moment. And I was just about to land on, oh my God, it's... And then, it, you know, the reveal happened. So 
the moment it's too late to look incredibly smart and prescient there but um who gives a shit because it was still fantastic to actually see and we got to see julie again i love her and i just love that actress i think she was also in agents of shield And I think the daughter's name is Clarissa. And yeah, and, and it turned out actually her motivation, her stated motivation, I mean, you know, there's always a possibility that she's got something else going on, but her stated motivation is basically she wants daddy's love. And she's got a very emotionally neglectful, manipulative father. Because Julie didn't capitulate in the face of his kind of emotional abuse because she actually found resolve, rejected him, didn't seek out his affections and actually said, you know what, I disown you. I'm, you know, I'm quite happy to make it on my own. I, I, I believe in my own capability to survive on my own two feet. I don't need you. I don't want you. I'm out. That would be something that a guy like Mai would actually really respect. You know, you saw the way that he looked at May and her sort of fortitude and, and I think the way that he operates is actually he views I think you know sentiment and emotion and love and all those kind of things kind of as vulnerabilities and weaknesses I think even in himself so actually ironically the way to his heart is is to not try is to actually go and be independent and do your own thing get your own successes and that's that's what Judy did but she didn't do it because she wanted his approval she did it just because that was her sheer force of will and he could see that he could see her authenticity he could see her refusal to i guess break her own value her own internal value system under pressure which was almost from his point of view he would see a similarity because although he's doing what he's doing for reasons that i find morally objectionable the process is similar in that you know he's told he needs to be one type of person but his mission is different to that so i guess he could identify with that and respect it so now we've got let's call her clarissa is gonna attempt to take out james holden who she sees as the reason for her father's demise in a sort of ass about face attempt to get daddy's affections <sighs> which just genuinely makes me hate her even more not because I don't have sympathy for what she no doubt endured under that man's parenting. You know, I can imagine coming out of that incredibly damaged. So I, and I've got sympathy to all of that. But that is where it ends. I don't, that sympathy doesn't then make me go, oh, then it's legitimate for you to go and behave um, and actually literally kill other people um in pursuit of the affection of the man who abused you it does not make that okay does Mao also bear some culpability for what she's doing now absolutely he set that chain of events in action but that doesn't pardon her of, of her role in it so right now she's on my shit list um anna is sailing very close to the wind she really needed if you reflect on the way that avasarala and arjun had their conversation when she was choosing to stay on earth you know when there was all of the threat of imminent death for her that was a conversation i guess their relationship is predicated on them being the kind of people that do those things and you know it was part of the reason that it, probably he loves her and respects her so much is that she is this woman in the world and so he was able to give his blessing, not his permission. And that was what was so beautiful about that conversation they had back in the day, and back in episode, uh, season two. I know it hasn't even been easy. I know that, and I'm sorry. Stop it. Stop. You never have to apologise to me. 
sorry. Just know I want to be there with you. But our home is threatened. And if I left, you wouldn't respect me anyway. Why did I marry such a great woman? You got very lucky, didn't you? I'm quite disappointed that Anna is not having that conversation in an honest way with her wife um, because this is where those things kind of get messy. If she goes in that thing and dies, her wife is bringing up a child on her own. She's going to be grieving, her child is going to be grieving. There is a lot and I think you need to have conversations about those things before <laughs> Yeah, before you go and do them. It would have put at risk her opportunity to stay and see this thing and I don't judge her at all for wanting to make that choice but I think, well I wouldn't do that to my wife basically is the point. There's no way on this earth that I would do that to my wife. We would have probably had the conversations about variables in this situation and you know. <laughs> I think you just need to negotiate if you're gonna sign up for something like that and it, again it's like Arjun it's not about permission it's not about someone saying you can do this or you can't do this it's about fully cluing your partner into who you are and what you are likely to do in a given situation and having them understand that so that they can make their decisions and their decision might be to leave you but you know that that gives you're giving them the respect to choose if they want to live the kind of life that they will live if they're going to be with you and you just have to do that honestly this is going to be interesting to see where they go from here i do, I do think there's going to be some fallout from that decision i really hope she doesn't die because it would just be devastating thank god naomi is now making her way back to the rosinante which is where i want her her voice is back to normal and by the way i don't have any issue with the belter accent i love the belter accent. Beltaloga. <laughs> I love it. But what I don't like is when characters' accents change because then you hear the accent. I don't I hear the the actor putting on the accent at that point because I'm like, but you didn't speak that way for fucking nearly three years. So I'm real I'm I'm hoping now we can go back to normal Naomi voice. I loved the comeuppance that Amos gave to the documentary crew and frankly I'm just glad to have them off the ship. I didn't like those characters at all. The woman annoyed the shit out of me and the guy gave me the creeps. So good riddance. I was genuinely gleeful watching Amos send them off the ship but obviously they're very unlikely to say many nice things about the crew of the Rosie to the Martians. I guess my hope is that Bobby is on the Martian ship. I should know that at this point because I know in episode 7 we did actually get the name of the ship that Bobby was on and they did mention the name of the ship in this so it could well be that it, we already know that it is the ship and so I would have I would have put that in a note in the Everton by now anyway um, but that was cool I just I can't this show has given me so much to chew on right now it's absolutely brilliant i couldn't imagine how this season could get any better and in episode seven where we were kind of re repositioning it was a really hard watch because it felt like it felt a little bit like the way that the team felt when they were approaching the ring where you suddenly had to like like kind of slow down when you've been like traveling really fast and then all of a sudden like, that's how i felt in episode seven i did not anticipate that literally the next episode we would go and like fly off again and now I feel like I'm at warp speed no it's not warp speed but I feel like, <laughs> but like I'm in a burn a high G burn oh that was fantastic absolutely fantastic I loved it I loved it tell you what guys I think this might be my new favourite show. I really do. Oh, wow.
okay, I'm going to go. If I've got it in me, I'm going to go straight on and watch the next one. But yeah, until the next time, bye-bye. Thank you.